I am so obsessed with this, this like, I don't know, this whole thing that we do because of the transferable skills. I would not stand a fucking chance as a husband, business owner, boss, whatever, without what I've learned in the gym. Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning into another episode of the Misfit Podcast. The full goon squad is reunited at last. last. Just a few days, you know. Welcome back, days. me. Welcome back, Thanks, you. guys. <laughs> we didn't say that, did we? Nah, I didn't fucking say that. Shut the fuck up over there. <laughs> he normally, if I do listen to any of the coaches' podcasts, says something like, "No, he's what bumble we, fucking around." What did we say? What did we say? Did, did you, you say anything good? One? No. Uh, did you say anything good? I don't in think the last so. One? I think we jumped right in. Who? Wow, is that worse? Would I rather be insulted or forgotten? <laughs> I think insulted. <laughs> I think you want to go insulted. A yeah, little bit of both. We got any snack chat today, boys? I mean, we might as well start off with that that comment the from what? from our own Morg Jacks. <laughs> I don't know if I can read that out loud. Uh, <laughs> turns out our uh, social media manager man <laughs> Morgan, yep, um, Mojo likes nerd clusters <laughs> quite a bit. Okay, I feel we like brought them to his attention with the podcast and um yeah i had almost an entire bag of those on saturday night now what weekend. size bag are we talking just that little square one yeah like the standard square one you so, almost had it well it was well it was opened <laughs> and, was and someone else had eaten at least one of the clusters That's before i got up. my hands on it and they stopped Self-control. This person okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I had to step in. Yeah. Uh, intervention. <laughs> yeah. Intervention. Got you shit. fucking soft serve son of a bitch doesn't know. Maybe how we can't say what Morgan said. This bag. Um, they're so fucking good. I think it was the very berry ones too. And then at the end, the nice part is at the end, like all the little you get loose to dump nerds, the nerds. You just get yeah. a fucking all the berries <laughs> of, of nerds. Make sure you check out the YouTube we, channel I'm for a, a visual. I'm not a, a big, of nerds. I'm not a big like. Uh, I'm not a big candy like like sugary candy like versus like candy versus chocolate. I yeah, chocolate. I'm usually more of like a chocolate and like savory kind of guy. I'm a proud four year old. Yeah, but man, those things I I did not put that bag down. I actually got some DMs that were like, "I am older than you and also love children's candy." And I was like, "Sick." <laughs> Like candy, congratulations! That's like nice. good stuff. <laughs> um, along the same lines of snack chat, just a couple of things I wanted to bring up because the first version of snack chat was the chips. Here? Was the yeah. chips right? And yeah. it was that I eat too much salsa. Okay, <laughs> how do you guys feel about slippers? Oh, big <laughs> slippers! Big, big big fan. You're a slippers guy. I watch slippers, slippers on your person. feet. All the time. To be I don't clear. know where I, else you would well, put I your. I don't know what kind of freaky shit you're you on all fours. Really, I don't really either, but we <laughs> went from we went from we went <laughs> from chips <laughs> to too much salsa to what do we feel about slippers? And yeah. I was like, is this a is that a food? You do you is eat that a, slippers? <laughs> I'm resolving marital spats on the podcast. Uh, big, I like that's good. You're a big slipper guy. Slipper guy. I mean, different. If they're they're kicking around the house and they're by the door and I think about like, I see them like I'll throw them on my feet but like I'm not a big like socks or slippers I'm guy. Around guess, the house. Ted, are you a slippers guy? Sometimes I accidentally wear my slippers to the office. Well, see, I knew you were a slippers guy, but you use them as shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, aren't they? So you wear slippers say, at home. Oh yeah, I've to got, like relax. No, well, they're not. It's not really for relaxing. It's more like so I can bring him outside when I need to without okay. having to go put my boots on. So. Yours are functional. It's functional My, use. The yeah, primary they're free reason birds. they're like or all birds, whatever they're called, but they've got like soft rubber. Play soles. free bird. <laughs> they've they've grown on me for the purpose of keeping my feet warm, but my apartment collects so much dirt that it's more annoying to be walking around in either socks or barefoot, mm. and I can just feel the all crunch. the little crunching and like all the dirt, and then it gets in my bed. Tell Dave wipe his paws. So the so the, the slippers are a nice. I don't like buffer. them. I figured you were no. I don't like them. Uh, is, is it the sweaty feet or the yeah, smell? Maya's family does the like every year. If it's over 59 degrees in the house, it's too warm situation. The old school, old school, you know, Northeast don't vibes. Don't touch the thermostat. Don't, don't touch it. Um, Electrified. Our room, our bedroom was 58 degrees when we got home. Maya's mom had been staying in it. 
Wow. And she was telling Maya how it was good for her health and it was awesome. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's good for your health. For so your they health. have a bucket of slippers at the front door because they have, you know, tile or hardwood, whatever, and they don't want their guests to be cold. And they don't understand why I won't take the slippers. Take the fucking slippers. Oh, so it's a communal <laughs> box of slippers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, Maya has these. one at our house that doesn't get used right? because I don't Use wear it. slippers. Yesterday, I was working in the basement and I did not have shoes, socks, and I was in shorts. And on the basement floor, eventually, like toes were starting to go numb. So I went upstairs and put socks on. That didn't work. I put socks and shoes on. And then it was eventually like, why? Okay, put your house shoes on. Why don't you now put your psychopath. Why don't you put your slippers on? I don't. I don't <laughs> like them. <laughs> Sam, I am. They're like, I don't they're, like. I don't want my feet to be constricted, but I'm very much like would want to be barefoot all the time, kind of a person. Like I don't. I would prefer not to wear socks. I would prefer not to wear shoes. I used to just jam my sockless feet into shoes and then Maya would throw them away because they smelled. Smell, yeah. Um, one time life. she did it on vacation. It's like, fuck, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Barefoot <laughs> life. figure it out. <laughs> Barefoot life. I was in Hawaii, so, I mean, you know. He's kind of around there. If I, if I, yeah, I think I would be My feet get hot. The they time. get boxed in. That fur with the no socks. You get sweaty feet. That weird They're smell, gross. too. Slippers got a weird smell. Like a weird, mm. sweet smell. It's creepy. I don't know what it is. Because you put your feet in there without I think socks you, on. I think if you got a decent, <laughs> a decent pair that you like, you uh, might, you might change your tune after after a little while. Maybe, but, may, but maybe not. I could. I'm I'd a be, kind of guy. I had a I would period. Be really surprised if I went over to your house and saw you like welcome somebody wearing slippers. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? You you gonna kill exactly. shoes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually finally lost it. <laughs> He's. <laughs> I need to go. I gotta find a new job. <laughs> have, you, have you tried the like? Uh, like porn mogul slip on slippers with like the open back. They just have the front and you just kind of slip your foot into them. Porn mogul. Yeah. Like, I know like you're talking Hugh about. Hugh Hefner probably yeah. wore them every day of his life. He didn't have Ooh, any other shoes. Those kind of yeah, slippers. Like fancy, They're like, like kind velvet. of silk Ooh. or velvet. Like mm, just open back. One. I could see something like a full kit like that uh, like in a, my like retirement years. a smoking years. jacket, a yeah. cigar, a couple of like tracksuit kind of vibe. Yeah. You only wear that in a bathrobe. Yeah, every day. Maya might throw you out. Though. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I just when I was in college, though, I had the like moccasin slippers from Walmart. Those were also my shoes. Yeah, I came home from Colorado once. My parents picked me up at the airport. I was in fake moccasins slippers. Super baggy sweatpants. Puka necklace. I had a <laughs> no, it was more like it was more like uh like snowboarder stoner vibe. Like I had the winter hat with the long the long side tassels. Yeah. You know, you like oh, you yeah, yeah. so you can tie them up underneath yeah. if you need to. And I was wearing sunglasses and it was at night. And my dad was just like, What did they do? They to drove me? off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> flipped you off and drove foot. Yeah. If it was just him and my mom wasn't in the Put front in seat, the back of the back that up. might have happened. <laughs> that might have happened. All right. I feel like if you were a middle schooler in Maine at any point, that was your you wore that to school at least like that like wasn't the, the time that the wasn't the I'm trying to think of what the beanie vibe was. It was more skull cap when we were in high school. It was the one that didn't fold up. We, we so it's like just of... straight, like basically just straight down. Yeah. And it said like Godsmack on it or something, or it had the <laughs> <Salty>. flames. <laughs> that... We had we had a lot of the the, uh, the uh, Russian bomber hats. <laughs> I still got one of those. The okay. big like furry yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> Godsmack in a fan. You like Godsmack hats? Kid Rock. <laughs> Everyone in high school. Fuck, that's amazing. <laughs> um. Okay, moving Wait, on. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Tell me that you all saw the final play of the Cowboys 49ers game. They just killed Ezekiel Elliott and said, good luck, idiot. <laughs> did you got did you see this? Uh was it the was it Dak's run? No, no. it was no. Zeke was the center. Yeah. And uh, the rest Dak. of the team, Ted, you remember Polcat? Yeah, so it was Polcat without the placeholder. The entire team was elsewhere. Now this makes Zeke an ineligible receiver, but he can be lateraled to. So oh, the, I like that stat when they said that to the, on the live broadcast. The, the, the linemen are out wherever, the wide receivers are with them, and it's literally just Zeke and Dak. <laughs> and the defense sent out all like corners, linebackers, like we're going to get people that can run and tackle. So for a moment, 
there was this idea that Zeke was going to be safe. <laughs> Credit to Zeke. The snap was beautiful. That's what snap. an athlete. Beautiful snap. But when you take a man that weighs 100 pounds more than you and you're leaning backwards and he's running Full forwards, <laughs> oh my God, he fucked him up so bad. And it's just so rude for, I don't know if it was Kellen Moore or McCarthy who came up with that play idea, but it is so rude to put him in that position. I mean, he's been getting hit like that his whole life. So of I doubt course. he cares, but I, it was so Cowboys to have the Schultz. He didn't, he wasn't Did, in bounds know, on that, that play. That was amazing. Wide open, just steps out of one foot out of bounds. It's great. And then they have him blown up and then they have this elaborate play design and the guy runs a slant and it he smokes. gets his fucking <laughs> lunch money stolen as well. Oh, it's so good. It's literally like what, like playing we go. that in like 2003. Here, oh, we, here go. we go. Yeah, this is great. Watch this. I seen it. I did see this. I but saw, like, I, I, him, I love that he's lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and bam, bam. flattened. What a play. Everyone was excited too. Maybe they figured out the hook and ladder. Maybe they've got something. <laughs> Jesus. That's fucked up. That is fucked up. They should just ran a QB draw with that play. Okay, huh? Ted, we've got another one. Um, I need you to find the exercise video with Nick DeVry. I think it was F1 that posted it. Jen sent me this last night. We get an F1 driver on the ski erg. Oh, no. It's worse than you think it's going to be. Can't be. I already know it's... Uh, it's worse. I know what pretty bad looks like. What do like. you guys think he's going to do with his arms? Uh, I think he's just going to short he gonna go one at like, a time? Is he going one, one pole one at a time? time? <laughs> one ski at a nope. time? Is he doing the cyclone where he turns around backwards and does one of these? <laughs> nope. Yeah, he's facing the wrong way. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen someone in the ski are going to face the wrong direction. So Jen just, sent it to me and said, like, how, how terrible do you feel about his ski form? And I was like, okay, it's going to be bad because... He's a Formula One driver. He's not a cross. Does he bend at the waist? He does bend at the waist. Right. He does, does not he bend, bend at the, at the elbow. Oh, <laughs> mummy. Yes. Tin man. Old Full old mummy. Yeah. Tin. Is it like a compilation of a bunch of guys working out? No, it's just him. <laughs> I, I I can find it for you. Hold on. You guys can tell me about uh, how good ski form is in like beginner's class or something while I find it. <laughs> how good is ski form in beginner's uh, class? Who was under? it? Who'd you say was uh, It's posted by Red Bull, Ted. And he's doing that crazy, like, <clears throat> how hard can you turn the wheel machine? What driver? Nick DeVry. Nick DeVry. I don't know how to do say Do you watch that name. stuff? He, uh, he's like he's going to be new. Season. He's going to be new yeah, this I've year. Never, he he heard did that the. Name. Yes. That's the one. Oh, was it? Did he play oh, Nintendo Wii over there? I didn't see that? I didn't. I scrolled he, past that video before I got to the skiing. I saw They basically, because you're pulling like five or six Gs when you're going around a turn. Hmm. So they do the like. They have a motorized steering wheel you fight against. Yeah, or? you uh, yeah okay. they, they like up the, the resistance, the feedback, and they they literally have them sit there and turn it against higher and higher resistance as many times. They do like yeah. intervals, interval training of that. Damn, those rotators though, I'm so strong. I like it was so bad that like my initial reaction was we need to make a response video to this. And we just send need to, to be like, to listen, listen. What if we send Sherb through F1 training? Oh my Yikes. God. Have him puke I everywhere. Barely drive a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen the videos where they will put the celebrity in just a normal car with them around the track? Yeah. And like, they're probably pulling, I don't know, two, One three, two, yeah. somewhere in that range. They're going to sleep. And they're dying. And they're just fucking they terrified. They hate it so they're much. They're like sick or they're like, like nodding out. Uh, no, it's not that bad, but they're okay. terrified. They're absolutely terrified. And the drivers are like, is this a joke? Like we why did you even come? We on drive this ride? like two or three or four times faster than this at all times. Frankie Muniz is now a NASCAR driver. I saw that. that was I didn't know that he was. He races uh, like supercars. Like he was trying to do the twenty-four hours of Le, Le, Man, Le Mans. Le Mans. I don't. Speaking of that, Ford versus Ferrari goat movie. Good movie. Have you seen that? I haven't seen no. it. No. So good. What if I can get into all like the maybe top that? fifty. Really? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Damn. It's that good. I think. Like top 50 movies? Oh, yeah. Look at that Here we go. All right. So He definitely skips leg day. <laughs> <laughs> they have to, though. They, if they, if they the beat, car, right? Uh, it just, it's not that they can't fit. It's they weigh the car Way, down. Weighs the car down? Yeah. He definitely skips leg day. You got nice. to slim Damn. down a little bit. That dude's jacked. <laughs> Honestly, with the frames per second, it's going to get even better. Here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> like, I, I, I've... I wish I could. Does, does, I wish I could say I've seen. Bend? I've never seen worse. 
But you'd be lying? But I'd be lying. There's no, like, uh, <clears throat> no shuttle controls on the video. So it's it just, just so good. Mummified. <laughs> it's remarkable that you would think that not bending your elbow would help I want to know who... He's working his lats, kid. Leave him alone. He's working his lats. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's that. Maybe he's also his hands are only coming up to like shoulder height he on his way up. He definitely maybe that mobility in the like car. That. You know, he's got those desk shoulders. He can't get his arms over his head. Yeah, that's not good. That's not yeah, ideal. not good, right? That's not ideal. Not awesome. Jokes on us. Dude's making fucking <laughs> zillion dollars. He makes like that. so much money that they don't tell you how much money he makes because they don't want to upset people. What's the like how how much? What's the range? Like you probably like more like it? more than most American sports athletes. Oh, more okay. than most. It's just a product of how many sponsors just they the have sponsor. and the like worldwide following. Is that like more the reason or the the wealth fund, the sovereign wealth fund from Saudi Arabia tried to buy uh, F one for twenty two and a half billion dollars. <laughs> Those folks have so much money. God, yeah, it's Insane. it's the like the most rich people sport there is. Because the other rich people's sports don't have enough like focus on it. You, you know what I mean? Talking about like uh, fucking polo, polo and yeah, yeah, like exactly. racing boats crickets. and shit like that. <laughs> crickets? <laughs> Do you say crickets? <laughs> crickets? I don't think that's a rich person sport. No? No. No? No. It's got to be a product of just like the fact that you just need a stick and a ball and you just smack it. Like, not, you don't need a horse. <laughs> you don't need a race car. <laughs> so we are currently, while we're filming in week three. Cheer of phase four or quarterfinals prep. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to the people that are currently following Hatchet and it's like a bit of like uh, checking in, like how is it going so far? Are you able to sort of recognize, especially in weeks one and two and the one that we're currently in right now, the lower volume and are you able to put more eggs into the basket of that individual workout? Is the warm up and the cool down there? Um, I'd say right now is the perfect time for that audit because again, the way that the peaking schedule works is you're kind of all in on a, a lot fewer pieces right now. And then as it builds to the higher volume, we're looking for that expectation of bringing the same energy and the same dedication to all of these little things. Um, and I would even say, don't, add those final few pieces during that week if you can't continue to do that because that behavior making it you know more more about discipline than motivation more habitual this is how i work out this is how i prepare this is how i strategize for certain things is going to be more useful on the way down and into the open than it will be to just say i did more workouts yeah i think it would interest me the most the chatter and discord has been really great i think there's been a lot of good feedback amongst the athletes in that channel i'm curious to see kind of feedback at the end of the phase and how they get through the opening quarterfinals and how they feel about it because the biggest difference to me is the not getting slapped in the face with like the change in a phase because a lot of times when a new phase starts it's like holy shit like the first two weeks you're just I feel like you're just scraping your dead body off yeah, the yeah. road have you been run over by a Mack Which truck wouldn't be the it's the opposite it's just what you don't want you don't want anticipation that. during the peaking schedule so i'm really curious to see how people respond to that i mean personally i've liked the fact that the volume feels like it's dropped a tiny bit so i can focus more right. on that because i'm basically following the hatchet peaking schedule with a meld of i don't know four different programs but i like to of, call it the witch's brew yeah the witch's brew but i i have appreciated the fact that it's allowed me to really just focus on a few things and not feel like there's this giant menu ahead of me as opposed to like all right there are two or three things that most you're going to do today. Can you break it up into two sessions and in each session, like what are you going to focus on and what are you going to do? And then does that allow you to get more intensity? I've found currently that's been working pretty and your well. Your notes have been much more detailed because it's like, it is, I'm, I am zeroing in on that thing. Yeah. And this is the, you know, final tune ups here. So if there's something that's still looming over you that you haven't really dialed in or you're not confident with, like, you know, we did the, uh, Hunter and I actually did this together. You had to modify a little bit, but it was the ski lunge piece that had, you know, varying styles of lunges. Yep. And, you know, it was nice to get a piece that had me focusing on something on the front end that I wasn't very good at. So like chance to use athlete IQ and be a little bit more cautious on skiing so I can focus on something that I'm not particularly good at, which is that double, uh, dumbbell overhead walking lunge. And then after you get through that kind of like clear that window, it's like, all right, now you've got six minutes of really high intensity skiing and lunges, which allowed me right. to push. So I've found this period of time to be, you know, 
you know, putting the uh, final touches on the painting, so to speak. If I'm getting ready to kind of peak for quarterfinals, I have to be kind of looking at those last few things that maybe haven't perfectly been dialed in and try to dial those in. How did you feel about the lunges in the workout, the non, the non overhead ones? They were, they were super easy. I, I actually was really like, Typically, I'm not an athlete that can do very good lunges and use it just form related. Yeah. I'm either stepping into the straight of a line or I'm taking too long or too short of a stride, which just kind of fucks with my ability to stay moving. But I felt like I motored through those really well, having just been doing a shitload of lunges. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, yesterday, for example. Pretty smoothly on them. Yeah. Like, the biggest thing I noticed uh, yesterday is I actually had the, both the skill overhead walking lunges and then heavy lunges. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's like 100 extra steps. And like, but every single time that I continue to do the lunges, workouts like that show up and I'm like, yeah, who cares anymore? Which is a huge reason why, if you're an athlete that has a big gaping hole in some part of your fitness, that like, it might feel like you're just beating a dead horse, but all of a sudden you come out the other side and you're like, wow, like I don't even care. Like the fact that I'm holding two 50 pound dumbbells and lunging for, I don't even know, I think it was ended up being like 10 steps, which is yeah. not a crazy amount of volume, but turn over fast, that can add up really quickly and it didn't even matter to me the other day, which I was really happy about. Clearly, cued you up for that answer. You've been working hard on lunges for a very long time now. Like we're talking 30 week range plus Mm. somewhere in that. And we've always had the, like, I don't really want to hear about your weaknesses if you don't do that sort of thing. Um, And it's not to, to be a dick about it, but you have to be really blunt about these things. And at the affiliate level, we see it constantly get really frustrated during the open and then woo, it's summer. And then, uh oh, oh, it's the open again. Shit. And some athletes come to me and say, "Hey, I really need help with this. Do you mind, you know, helping me before or after class?" And then some athletes are just like, "Hey, that person got way better. What the heck?" It's like, yeah, they did like ninety-five sessions. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. how you get better at things. So for you to be able to go in and have that, my only other question is how much of it is physical and how much of it's mental? Oh, I think early on, a big part of the reason I wasn't good at lunges was mental things. Just like, I'm uncomfortable. I'm always stronger squatting with two, or moving with two legs as opposed to one leg. Like, have had some lower extremity injuries. So like, you know, I don't want to blame that thing, but like, I don't have ankles that bend normally. So like, being able to like, push off your front foot and like really grab the ground and get your knee forward so you can really drive with your glute is something I struggle with because my ankles don't really bend past 90. So early on, it's just mental. It's like, I hate this. I can't get better at this. It's not getting better. It's not yeah. getting better. It's just the narrative you tell yourself. And then all of a sudden, you know, someone's watching and goes, why don't you just like step through one one or just try it? Who cares? Like, fuck, if you fall over, you just drop the barbell and start again. All right, well, fuck it. I'll try it. Started stepping through and then really being deliberate with like silly hack, but like look at the floor. It's got cracks in it. Split the crack with either side of your feet and try to keep that spacing as you step. And, you know, early on, I had to watch the floor to do that, which is not great when you're doing front rack lunges because you don't want to be looking at the floor during a front rack lunge. But eventually it got to the point where like this just becomes the way I lunge every single yeah. time. And now it's not a big deal. So now the mental hurdle of like, I'm not good at this has been crossed. And now it's like, all right, now that I don't care anymore, I'm just doing some lunges what can I get from this session? And typically now it's, can I do these faster? Or can I make sure that every single time my step feels good and there's no steps where maybe the knee hits the floor too hard? Like these are the things that I'm thinking about when I go into my lunges because there'll be days where, you know, a set of 10 feels like nothing and the next set of 10 is impossible and the set after it feels easy again. It's like, all right, what was different between set two and set three? Why was set one easy and set three easy and set two hard? And yeah. usually I can identify that because I've done it enough times now. I'm going to put you on, I've done this so many times and we do, I do get a different answer every time, which is good. But we used to joke at the old gym specifically, like inanimate objects don't feel any fucking way about you at all. Mm -hmm. So you having like a, Oh my God, look at that thing. Like it just sort of is what it is. Mm -hmm. Terrible saying that I hate that I just used. What he is talking about very much leads into like, fitness robot season is coming up like Mm -hmm. just one foot in front of the other continue to go fuck your feelings whatever Mm -hmm. the hell you've always been really good at that Mm -hmm. and i was reminded in the you guys just did the the video with the vest and i was just like like i i hate him how the fuck (laughs) does he keep doing that like it it made no sense to me but listening to you start to get a peek into the psychology of how you're able to do it because of how other people reframe how they feel about certain things you just don't seem to at least project in any way that you feel a certain way about movements in metcons they're just what's written on the whiteboard so you're going to execute and i think there's something about your physiology staying in a place where you know i know your heart rate's high but you're not panicking. You are not in fight or flight in the same way that other people present themselves. And like, 
I mean, if you have any instance of something to tell the people of how to achieve the fitness robot, you gotta, you gotta put it out there. Um, I, I think there is like some, a part of just kind of recognizing like what, what you said is, is probably more, more applicable in that it's just like, if you're not very comfortable at something like you need to like practice it. There aren't, there aren't, I think it's, I think it, a lot of it has to do with just like the amount of the literal number of reps I've accumulated in all like yeah. all CrossFit movements, which probably isn't much different than like, than you, but, um, there is definitely the element of just like some things are harder than others, but it's not like, I, I don't know. It just does. It seems like that's an objective metric or that's a subjective metric that yeah. you put in your head and it's like, okay, we can either work on these things to make them more comfortable or, in some instances, figure out ways to like either game around it a little bit or, or, or maybe just like reframe it differently. I think that workout, that workout too is like about as close to wheelhouse as you could get for, for me, like, like shuttle, shuttle runs, sure. burpees and, yeah. and like a small set of chest to bar. But that's which the narrative like a, that I get from athletes when we've really narrowed in on a few things and made progress. Mm hmm they say so many goddamn workouts are wheelhouse. And I'm like, yeah, it's cause you fit. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like you start seeing wheelhouse, like, oh my God, did I write semifinals? And it's like, no, you got better at the things that you weren't good at. And now more and more and more things feel wheelhouse. Yeah, I, I think, <clears throat> sure there's that. And I think I just, I feel pretty confident in my like, I've, I've done like, again, done enough workouts and have built enough of like a, a foundational engine that I, I know from, I know for the most part that unless I deliberately go into a workout with the purpose of like burying myself, like it's going to take a lot for me to get to a point where I have to like completely stop or I'm like, I'm so metabolically like drained that I have to like full stop in a workout like that that threshold that takes a lot more effort to get up there than it used to. So I think there is the, the, it's the, it's, it's training hours. It's, it's just time. It's, it's hours log doing the stuff that we talk about all you the time. You also don't do a lot of throwaway workouts. Like, like Sherb's, you're the yeah, type I'll of person a, where if, day if someone comes to Sherb and says, Hey, you want to jump in? Like, even yeah. though, potentially hips, knees, ankles need a little bit of work. Like potentially <laughs> he'll, he'll go do the workout. When yep. someone asks you, you're like, I'm probably, I, I will, but I'm going to need 30 minutes or so to get my knees ready or whatever. Yep. And I see the carryover from deliberate practice in your warm up to like just getting ready for the actual workout itself, you know, checking your form and all that. Yeah. And then getting into there, the workout. There is the, like, I, I think there are like, upsides and downsides to to it but i'm i'm kind of the type of person who's like if i'm gonna do something i would rather do it like extremely well sure. than just half-ass it or i would just i would just just as soon not do something if i can't do it with some sort of intention or intensity like if i have 30 minutes i would rather i would almost i would rather i'm gonna be like great i'm gonna crank up the sauna i'm gonna sit there for 20 minutes and i'm gonna jump in the cold tub for five and that's gonna be more beneficial for me than a than a shit right. 15 minute workout yeah. that I kind of didn't warm up for. So that that's true as well that I don't, I like if I do something, there's going to be like either like a focus behind it, a purpose behind it. Or if it's like, if it's one of there and there, I have plenty of these days where I'm like, I'm going to pick my three favorite movements because if I, if I'm going to work out today, like I'd rather enjoy it versus like the, like work your weaknesses, which, which is I think acceptable for someone who's not per doesn't particularly care about competing as much, but it's like, if you do the, if you pick your, if you do the, I'm going to pick my wheelhouse movements, it's like, fuck, well now I have to try hard. Now I like, there's no right. reason for yeah. me to not, yeah. to not try hard. So yeah, I think the combination of, of just having kind of that long-term mindset where it's like, I don't necessarily like, I might go through a period where, I only work out like four days a week or, or three days a week. And like, I, I hurt myself playing hockey two weeks ago and that's forced me to do a bunch of different, like spend a lot of time on the ski erg, a lot of time, yeah. like doing machines that I would otherwise just only do when they popped up in programming. So, um, yeah, I think there's a, there's a deliberate focus to pretty much every piece that I do, whether it's yeah. a small thing, like, Hey, I'm going to pay attention to how bad or good my chest of our pull-ups are today or it's like nope this is like this is what i got for the day like it's a checkbox, and that's 
that's fine because it's still hours logged. It's still reps accumulated. It's still, um, you know, practice like quality practice accumulated. So I don't know about the, the <laughs> I wasn't fucking Get on the microphone thing. and say that, Ted. So we're we're gonna uh, I'm gonna take this conversation up into the clouds now, as I like to do. One of the reasons Some why I think episodes of this sort are so important is we are potentially a lot more relatable to the masses than the best of the best. Um, What's and saying? well, so so <laughs> to 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 give you're intentionally not a competitive CrossFitter. You right. could have continued to be a competitive CrossFitter. And if someone hints at it, they mm -hmm. usually don't get the full sentence out before you go, nah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what the fuck is he doing? Why, why are you so intentional? Why are you going through these things? Why are you warming up in the way that you are and thinking about the workout the way that you are? Of course, you're a coach. But I'm so obsessed with this, this like, I don't know, this whole thing that we do because of the transferable skills. I would not stand a fucking chance as a husband, business owner, boss, whatever, without what I've learned in the gym. The things that you can have this, you know, you have this measurable outcome and they can sh literally show you that if I just keep at it or whatever, you know, life lesson that you're trying to figure out in your personal life, it can be translated over to the gym. And it's like, okay, maybe I'm not competitive or I don't care as much or like, Oh great. They're fucking going off again about warming up and cooling down or whatever. The translation to taking the time to do those things, to improve yourself in other areas is just, it's massive. Yeah. The, what I hear you saying is something I've been working with athletes on specifically is just like the, you know, Jocko Willink thing, the extreme ownership. Like if you actually care as much as you say that you care, these are the things that you have to do. And I don't expect you to know all these things, but I'm going to challenge you to think about them in this way or do these things. Because if you really want to be the best that you can, you have to realize the people who are the highest performers, not only are extremely talented, but think about all of these little variables that maybe you've put off to a side. Like a really silly one is that I was talking to Jenna and she had to do a, I think it was burpee bar muscle up piece on like a Saturday after just a really rugged week of training and her hands were all torn up and she's coming off water pollution. So a little banged up and, you know, she said, I can't do bar muscle ups tomorrow. And I said, stop. We've been trying to work on positive self-talk. I'm like, tell me this the same way again, but use positive language. And she did. And then I said, what do you do for hand care? And she's like, I don't know. Like I pick my blisters and I was like, no, 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 no. And again, this to me, I was like, why wouldn't a competitive CrossFitter who like relies on their hands to do basically all of their training, not care about hand care. And it was just, a you don't know what you don't know, but you don't know. So yeah. she's like, so what do you do? And I was like, I, well, first of all, like there can be something to be said that I maybe don't push myself to the level of a CrossFit games athlete. Most of the time where I, maybe I'm like, you know what? I'm going to come off the pull-up bar. So I don't tear my hands. You might push through that and say, fuck it. I'm trying to chase excellence. So I might go for a few more reps than I would. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I rarely tear my hands and here's how. So literally send her a link to Amazon. Here's a pumice stone you can use at the end of your shower. And it's again, a long boring story about a pumice stone you could buy like a beauty salon but the idea here is like that's a variable you can control if you take care of your hands you can train at a higher level for longer periods of time and if you don't do that here's a way to take ownership over an element of your training you haven't paid attention to and all of a sudden maybe instead of across the tiny training season you get 300 good training days now what if you get a 315 because you don't have those few days you had to skip something because your hands were torn or you were like in discomfort you know uncomfortable because of a blister you had from last week so again long story long here is that these are the variables that like you want to go into and think about and if you don't think about that you should have hopefully someone in your life or people around you in your life that are asking you like why, why not this way or why not that way or how come you did it this way today and again you can't always have that when you're by yourself, but like, that's why you use resources like podcasts. You have conversations with other athletes and you reach out and connect. It's so rare that you're going to be in a situation in life that can't be managed by again, trying to find the things that you can control. Mm. Like, and there's just something about the way that you can learn that in the gym 
that makes it feel possible in this environment where everything is ethereal and there is no way to measure it. But you sort of just believe in that you're, tr it's like a trust the process kind of mindset. All right, Misfits, just a quick break to shout out our show sponsors and hopefully save you a little bit of dough. Misfit Athletics quarterfinals prep camp. It's getting close. It's getting close. close. March 4th and 5th. But we want you to show up on March 3rd and do 23.3 with the Misfit Gym crew. Um, one of the things that we touched on in this episode is this idea of um, being around like-minded people. And you are the average of the five people that you spend your most time with. And Fuck. when it is... You screwed, Hunter. <laughs> when it is 50 of those people, it's such a powerful experience to go in because a lot of times you're really passionate about something and the other people in your life are not so passionate about it. You show up and it's a, an entire gym filled with people who are super passionate about the same exact things as you. Um, Tickets are starting to move a little bit quicker. Again, we did sell out last year, so make sure that you head to misfit.camp and we'd love to see you March 3rd to do the open workout. Camp is the 4th and the 5th. We're also brought to you by the best swag in the game, Sharpen the Axe. You can head to sharpentheaxeco.com. You can use your favorite athlete code to help save yourself a little green and put a little money in their pocket. One thing that I'm really proud about, and I'm sure everybody at this podcast studio is really proud about, is the fact that we can help athletes support their journey to get to the semifinals in the CrossFit Amen. Games. So again, look up your favorite athlete, find their athlete code, use that to save a little green, give them a little green so they can support their season. Again, you can head to sharpentheaxeco.com and use that code. New gear dropping soon. And lastly, we are brought to you by Proper Fuel. We uh, <laughs> we've talked a lot about a lot about habits and a lot about routine on this podcast so far. Um, Proper Fuel has the full gambit of kind of routine builders when it comes to performance um, and with the hydrate stuff, even just kind of general day to day cognitive function, making sure you're well hydrated. Hydrate in the morning, pre workout for your pre workout. Of course, the <laughs> pre workout for your pre workout. Get that. And of course, recover proper recover for your post-workout nutrition, everything you need, nothing you don't, all in those kind of nice, easily easily digestible and kind of like all-in-one sort of packets. You can head to properfuel.co, use the code word MISFIT to save on your first order. All right, be back to the show. Stefan, I think that's a that's a huge part of it. And, and especially as I've gotten like a little bit older, there's the element of just like, what I do in the gym is now is less important to me than like being able to go play hockey, yeah. like play, play men's league hockey or go surf when I want to. And when I get, if I get like I am now, like a little bit hurt, it's like, fuck, I have to figure out how to one maintain fitness because I like, I need that like as part of just an outlet every day. Like yeah. we've talked about that, just oh, like yeah. needing to move in some capacity, yeah. whether it's a, you know, a lifting session, a pump session or some cardio or somewhere in between. But, um, like having to one, having gone through like all of the, the phases of like the various CrossFit trends, whether it's like carb backloading, it's keto, it's like, we're going to do lifting. We're going to do lifting in the off season and we're not going to do CrossFit until, until the open. It's yeah. like all of these different, like stages and and uh and kind of progressions that like the sport has gone through and therefore that i've gone through and that misfits gone through and like the different recommendations and it's like now maffetone's this big thing and now like i can't you can't i can't scroll for more than eight seconds without seeing something about cold exposure because now that's like right. a trendy a trendy thing and it's also something that like a lot of members are getting into so like every time something like that kind of pops up into the community and i and i like investigate a little bit from it like in pulling like more and more information about that is how to kind of how to optimize yeah. or like to work or it's like okay you're injured well you can still sit in a sauna and you can still do cold tub and there's a fuckload of benefit to that that yep. you know maybe maybe you can dissuade losing a little bit of fitness over the next couple of weeks by by focusing on that or it's like you're now I'm really tight. So I just, I'm going to go, I go through a two week period where I stretch a lot and I learn a lot about how to loosen certain things up and like, oh, my back doesn't hurt anymore. And now I can communicate that to a member who's having yep. the exact same thing. And it becomes more about like, what, what little small thing can you do today or take or, or learn and then have that in your toolkit so that you don't have, basically you don't have an excuse to regress back kind of 
to the left on the fitness continuum, for example. It's Look just at like, what you can do versus what you can. I mean, yeah, that's exactly. And right that's not now. to say that it's not like discouraging. Like I've been irritated as fuck over the last couple of weeks, no. like not being, I yeah, know it doesn't sound like me, but <laughs> like, you know, get, getting on the, he said on, years, on right? the runner and, and, <laughs> and like, like, ah, 800 Watts is the fastest I can go without feeling like that bad pain. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Right. Sounds pretty good to me. Low score. <laughs> I spent, at uh, least a thousand hours this summer. At, at, <laughs> at that point, that base. <laughs> maybe seven hundred. <laughs> but um, but yeah, there's always there's there's generally always something you can do, and I think like I'm fortunate enough to just enjoy exercise, and I like have got I think I got into it at a young enough age that it's it's just like that's just kind of part of what I do. It's yeah. not like it's not a chore. It's just like this is part of your day. This somehow fits into your day in one way or another, and like it's okay if someday like yeah i worked out three days last week it's like okay as long as like the again the average is still you know kind of moving in the right direction and and like still lifts are still fine like conditioning is still fine and we're talking now about comparing that to three years ago hunter or even five years ago it's like that that's a it's a much bigger time frame that right. we're comparing things I saw to. I'm doing touch and go yesterday. He's definitely still got some fitness. I, was, I haven't seen him touch and go since now. Snatches, guy. <laughs> oh, just the couple. biggest thing that stood out to me there was the the lesson of the lead by example translates so well from again yeah. you learn it in the gym. Like people don't love being told what to do, especially by someone who's not willing to do the thing that they're telling right. them about. Um, and a lot of times those things are, are already being done, but potentially in the shadows. And you do have to take the moment to say, no, I am going to post my Maffetone session on Instagram, even though it's another photo of a sweaty bike. But if someone's like, oh, is that really the thing that you need to do? The cold tub stuff, the warm up and cool down that we have at our gym, like, like people look to certain members of the gym and obviously the member of the people on the coaching staff and they really, they, they want to see it. Yeah. They want to see it there. Like, oh, okay. Does this really make a difference? Because if you show up to class at the very last minute and don't really warm up and then spend 30 minutes on a podcast talking about it, it's like, what the, why are you, why are you telling me what to do when you like aren't even willing to do that yourself? Yeah. I think there's that, that is a combination of like, just, I think more, probably more of like my own background, like the military, that's yeah. a huge thing that gets that. And I think understandably and rightfully so, but try to like push that down to co and we're, we're fortunate enough to where it's like, it can be difficult at another gym where it's like, you know, cro CrossFit, CrossFit picture frame is like, it's like, we've got a bunch of part-time coaches. We do somebody else's programming. Like I see you guys like three times a week. It's not, it's a, it's a little bit different and we're lucky here to have, you know, kind of a foundational like culture that has been created. And we also happen to have a, a pretty fucking good program yeah. and there's no reason for coaches to be like bopping around other programs or doing other stuff and um and 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 whatnot but then when we start again teaching either coaches or talking to members about it or say like hey today we're gonna do uh you know in class every once in a while we'll, i'll tell people like grab a heart rate monitor if you have it we're gonna do the mafetone type warm-up and i'll communicate like, Hey, this is the same thing that I'll tell a CrossFit games athlete to do in the warm up area before a games event. Like this is what we tell people to do. Um, and I don't have, I've also tell members, like, I don't have my, like when, when camps roll around and I'm like, Hey, you guys should sign up for camp. Not necessarily because you're going to get something drastically different from what you would normally get in a class. Like I don't have my right hand pocket with all the dog shit cues for my <laughs> affiliate athletes. And then my left hand pockets sure. filled with these gems yeah. for elite athletes. It's more, more about getting to work out with different people, but oh, the culture change from like-minded individuals is yeah. so important. Yeah. And, it, and, and just by like, when you get everybody like, Hey, this is what I would recommend for you. This is the same thing or, or maybe more nuanced. Like, actually I would recommend this for you. It still has the, the same underlying principles is what I would generally recommend, but yeah. personalized a little bit for you. But yeah, either way, it's the, the leading by example, like, and, and I'm, I'm as much a proponent of that too. Like if, if, you're, if I'm going to be like taking orders from somebody literally yeah. or figuratively, and it's like that person's not willing to like, right. 
like good luck yeah i felt, I felt a lot of that last week that. last week's programming was just happened to be the week that i wrote for team misfit <laughs> and two of the gems in that week last week was some bike sprints and some ski sprints on the same day kind of back to back yeah and another day had like 100 baby box jumps in it and some devil's presses and both classes i taught in both classes i was just getting roasted like <laughs> why the fuck are you not doing this why am i doing this if you're not and i'm like I promise you I'm training and I'm working out, but like <laughs> definitely feel that vibe when yeah. I'm not doing as many affiliate classes that I have yep. been like get the same slack and I'm, or the flack. And I'm like, Hey, I promise you I'm doing stuff. That's nearly yeah. ter as terrible, but you're just not seeing but it. But you also have what I would say is enough banked hours of like, Hey motherfucker, I forgot about <laughs> more bike death days workouts than you've done. That's like, true. like, so, you know, pump he broke, he's broken bit. almost every bike in every gym that we've ever had. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, between Ted and I, I don't know many, so many uh, bikes that weren't assault bikes survived. <laughs> but, but we were buying but you every, have that. every week. Oh, fuck. God, <laughs> stop it. We just had to weld the frame back together. We were, the dude was just like, it's stronger than it was before. And I was like, well, we'll find out. Know, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll snap more of these than toothpicks. <laughs> uh, I walked by, I went to get my focus aid, and I walked by the old uh, ice tub. It's looking uh, it's icy. It was icy. You boys still getting in that thing? Last week I went in twice. I have not been in this week so far. I had a couple longer. It's only Tuesday. Ones. I had a couple longer ones last week. Yep. I have not been in since the have you, snowstorm. Have you been in when there's been a oh yeah. A decent amount of ice? I was yeah, I was throwing snowballs long, out of that bitch. How long did you make it? I go I always go five. You got five? Yeah. 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 Last last week I actually I, last don't week find I had a, a difference in tolerating a specific temperature. It's about whether I've been doing it frequently or not. Like I really don't notice going from because like I do it at my house and I have well water at my house and it's colder than the tap here but like it's you know it's it's not in the degrees, 30s or yeah, anything like degrees. that and when I haven't been doing it you get the like the, you can't breathe for the first minute or so and then the shiver happens earlier but ice or no ice once I'm in the routine yeah I don't really notice that much of a difference my only difference is like that my literal like collarbones and neck are like burning from like the ice being so close mm, to it. Yeah. But it's more, it's more afterward. It's more how long it takes me to sure. warm back up. And like the right. shivering I get afterward is more intense. And then I like have to wait till for longer to like, before I go jump in the shower, even yeah. though I know tomorrow is my ideal. My but. start day for again, going in the morning. I just, one of the things I've been trying to do with the listening enough podcasts about the topic, it's like, Hey, if you really are after strength, yeah, what's your, what's your current, with both of you, what is your current regimen? Uh, so I guess you're wanna, saying you're changing it. No, I'm saying I want to be better about that because one of the things that I've been reading about and, and listening to is that, you know, if you're looking for strength adaptation or hypertrophy, there should be a hopefully at least four hour gap between whenever you did, you know, that said training and your cold exposure. So you don't have that interference. If the training though was manipulating muscle tissue at that level, that is important to say. Yeah. yeah so again, hypertrophy training, ha you know, everyone sort of knows you, there's a certain amount of load that has to be put on the muscle fibers. Yeah, you, to have to go to a certain, you have to go to sure. a certain place when right. you're doing that kind like of training. You can get in so. the tub after a mafetone session. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not so the, the, I've been doing that kind of situation where now I'm like, all right, if I want to do the cold tub, kind of like you were talking about, you get here first thing, you s change into your shorts and you just fucking hop right in. And, you know, I've done that twice now where my first thing I did when I got to the gym was hop right in the tub for two and a half to three minutes, which isn't a super impressive time. Your hands on yet? Oh yeah, I'm I'm to neck, to neck. And what's really cool is that the new watch will tell you how cold the water is. So like it tells me right on my watch, it's 47 degrees, which isn't super cold either. The people who go far colder than that. But I found that- When was that? 47? 47 was last week when I did it. I must so have been just after- It was just like, there was, there was slush it. on it the was top of it when really? I went in. Yeah, there was slush on it. That thing's wrong. Yeah, well, that's what I said. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I didn't. I, I yeah, monitored you did. it at like 41. Well, if anything, it I'd should make you be feel colder. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be feel better more. about your performance. Um, sorry, you asked me the question of like, what's my normal protocol here? So I try to get what we talked about in the podcast. It must have been two months ago now where, you know, I'm trying to get somewhere about an hour a week of hot exposure in our, in our sauna, which, you know, nice enough now. It stays over 80 degrees Celsius the entire time, which is like 175 degrees. So like yep. plenty of time there. And then... I haven't got to the 11 minute mark every single week, but normally I, again, shoot for that same mark just based on the, like the minimal effective dose. Like I want to treat the, the cold exposure and hot exposure similar to the way we want to try to tell someone that's coming to the affiliate for fitness, like try to come and get your minimal effective dose that gets your fit without yeah, and it's subjective the cold too. That's the, that's the one thing that's very different about those two topics is if it's not hot enough, it's not hot enough. Mm. If it's cold for you, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> so like 50 degrees. 
<laughs> the sun's shining now. 50 yeah, degrees is not warm. Yeah, it's not no, warm. I mean, honestly, this is the same thing. So, uh, you know, I had people ask me about this because I did cold exposure on my back porch. Like, I literally just went outside in my fucking underwear and sat on my back porch. That's not like, fun, by the way. It was terrible. Yeah. That's yeah. so much more. You got to sit out there for so much longer. You and do. You're just like, cold, you're just like kind of cold for a kind of long time. Yeah, it was like 30 degrees outside. So I'm out there in my short. Yeah, it's like a 12 minute there. AMRAP. I'd rather be like exceptionally. <laughs> I want to do a sprint or yeah. a 20 minute yeah. AMRAP. What the fuck? That 12? 12 minute bullshit. <laughs> And people are like, how do you know? And I'm like, you know, things I read. So when you start shivering, that's a good sign to go in. A couple of rounds of that at home. Sure, walks out and just in. goes, <laughs> walks <laughs> back inside. Oh, damn, that was hard. All right. <laughs> got some subjective, Cheetos. you said. Subjective. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, for me, it's trying to get the, the bare minimum dose. Where, where did to you, where, sorry, where were you reading? What what information? I know I had a member ask me last night and I was like, Huberin Lab's a good one, obviously. The So Su he Susanna goes based on, Soberg, yes. The, so she has a good, yeah, it's 11 minutes per week in the cold. Yeah. Is it 42 or like 47, 57, 57, 57 in the, in the hot? In the yeah. hot. Yeah. And that's, that's usually what I shoot for. And usually I'm a little over on the, the hot and sometimes a little under on the cold. Just personal preference. I'm working on that. Like yeah. I have found though, the days that, and I've talked to you this a few times, but the days that I do start with cold, like it does suck to warm back up over a couple hours. If you don't do in the sauna, like afterwards, what is but the closest feel, you guys have gone from cold to then exercising? Uh, within 30 minutes. I don't think I've done cold then exercised. I did cold into it's like the new thing. There's always some way new to thing. change this very simple, like get in a cold tub, you fuck do it every <laughs> other day to like, this is the actual protocol. Yeah. Um, but that's how you sell things and stuff. Yeah. You're set. You did it cold, took to cold to mafetone. Uh -huh. It took me so long to get my heart rate up but my body temperature got way too high. I was sweating my ass off. So my body, like they, they say, do the hot shower because you ha add acceleration to your cool down, basically. Yeah. Um, the same thing happened. Like I was, and it was in the gym, not a hot day, upstairs. I was sweating my ass off like fast. So it was a very weird combination of my heart rate staying low, but my core temperature was way too high. Were you wearing that like that cream colored shirt that day? I feel like I saw you up there one day. Caroline and I were in the sauna and we we're like, man, Drew has been on that bike forever. He was drenched. Like sweaty as I ever seen you. I actually that think that might've been the day. Was that day. But you were like soaked. <laughs> but that's a coincidence. I look yeah. like that every single time. Cause I mean, I'm on the warm up and cool down. I'm on the bike every yeah, other day for 90, 15, 90 yeah. minutes. So it's like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done, yeah, I haven't done the cold to exercise. I'll do cold and then like walk on the treadmill to like warm up, but yeah. not, I guess, I guess that I've had a couple of days where I'll like do the cold in the morning and then go about my day and then exercise, sure. but it's not, yeah. not like close, Yeah. but yeah, mine's, mine's generally, I've only done a couple of days where like, it really sucks going straight from like you wake up and jump in just cause you're already, you don't yeah. have a whole lot of circulation to begin with and like. That really sucks. More more so just like takes longer to get warmed up. But I'll usually just I it's either work out, do my workout, and then sauna slash I have to like do some mobility stuff and like stretching, yeah. then the sauna, then the cold tub, or even more often just like work out and then just go into the cold tub. Once I've once I've like got took took care of my tissues and like cooled down sufficiently, yeah. then I'll get in the the cold tub. So for people listening that haven't heard this part, what they're referencing is you are, it's most advantageous to get out of the cold tub and then not warm yourself up by taking like a hot shower. Right. Um, it does help though to spend a decent amount of time drying off and redressing yourself right after that does help i fully like a, de I'll, like a decent I'll, amount i'll fully dry I myself find off that's a good a happy medium and then put a sweatshirt on no like t-shirt but like the sweatshirt yeah. so like you kind of create a pocket yeah. of like warmth but yeah my the only I, i'll jump in the shower i mean it's because i'm starting to get cold but i also just have to like function to work. <laughs> right like i have to go to work sure like i have to go coach a class <laughs> yeah like, can't be yeah looking homeless what's I'm your what's your protocol at right now basically five minutes in the cold and 30 minutes in the sauna every other day yeah so i do monday is cold tuesday is hot wednesday is cold thursday is hot i basically just go back and forth and do that um part of it is due to like just suggestions from people that actually look at the science and there is something to overdoing it, your body not getting the same response. Mm -hmm. Like when you read those studies about the sauna having the like 900% increase in growth hormone, if you look at the, like pro only once. the protocol is crazy. Mm -hmm. The protocol is like you have to do 
I think it was like four rounds three, of I think it's 30 like th- and 30. Yeah. It's it's like th- like almost three hours or something in the sauna, and you're not supposed to exercise. Rick Rubin style. And you do <laughs> an hour in the sauna, and then you don't go in it for two or three hours. You do another. So you do that on and off, and you're not supposed to use the sauna in the days leading up to it or the days after it. So like there is something to like stimulus response, like having like again, exercise is the same sort of thing. If you just, you know, did bench press every day, it probably wouldn't go all That's that fine. well. I got an you. actual question about that from yeah. someone that goes to the gym. They're asking me like how, how much, cause they've been enjoying doing it first thing in the morning right. for like, I think more mental benefits than physical. And they're like, how much is too much? And I was There's like- There's literally nothing I do anymore for physical benefits. That's like- For me, it's all it. mental. Yeah. Treat it just like exercise, <laughs> oh. like doing way more CrossFit is just doing way more CrossFit. Like it doesn't make you way more fit. Like, yeah to an extent, like you get your hours in, but like right. treat the cold tub the same way, like get your effective dose for the day and then don't yeah. overdo it. Cause there's no point. Like you don't get that many returns on that. Yeah. I was getting, I'm trying to think of who I was talking to someone about this recently and they seem kind of sad that they shouldn't do it every day. And then we talked a little bit about like, you could go jump in the tub for five to 30 set, like submerge, minute, like, yeah, yeah, like a really short period of time to do that to yourself in the morning, to get that cortisol spike, yeah. to tell yourself like you're awake, you're ready to rock. There's nothing wrong with doing that every single day. What I think you're probably not looking for is 35 minutes a week of doing that. Yeah. Like not, not completely necessary. And there are people again, who use it like Rick Rubin use it for like a mental challenge. How long did he stay in? 30 minutes? Yeah, I think he said 30 minutes at like fucking 45 degrees or something like that. It was a really long time. And whoever was interviewing was like, why? It's like, did and you he's like, thermia? I just <laughs> wanted to see if I could. Like in one of those sort of things. I can like when you decide to that. do like a half marathon on a machine. You're like, why are you doing that? And it's like, I don't care about my time. Yeah. I just want to know that I can do it. wants this. that bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> We should do that. We should make that bumper sticker, but with the meters for the marathon row. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Not recommending it. I don't do that marathon rail. Um, all right. We're, we're going to keep rolling with the current routines. So um, Sherb's definitely going to get put on the spot yep. because he won't talk to me about nutrition. Um, so we're going to make him do it on the podcast. So any, therapy, therapy any session. sort of other routine things, things that you are currently doing that because one theme that I I, my one. brain keeps getting stuck on is I am really just sort of sick of people saying whether or not they're motivated in a current moment. I I don't like it. I, it reminds me of a lot of other sayings where it's like the pity party extends out to the macro and then it just becomes sort of your, your thought. And this is what we do when that same person knows better to just follow the course and you, you know, you rip yourself right out of it. So this idea of, Jocko says discipline eats motivation for breakfast. People struggle with the word discipline. And Maya was actually, what if it was habitual, like habit forming? If you mm. centered it around that, there's something about the word discipline to like, to the wrong it kid. Com- yeah. It comes <laughs> off as like a, right. like a, like a powerful, almost like a denigrating, like exactly. form of like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you are not, cause it's more often than not. It's like, you're not disciplined. Right. right? It's not but like this it's, idea it's of just doing the things and that's how you create the, you don't have to rely on motivation. Your motivation is very overarching. It's very long-term macro, big picture. I do eventually want to be this person. And the way that I do that is by, you know, like a lot of the best athletes are like, you guys thought we were motivated the whole time and we were not. Yeah. It's like, like I do like if, if David Goggins doesn't want to get out of bed and go for a run, like it's like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. if that guy Sits like, those shoes for like, like two hours. self-proclaimed <laughs> an actual hardest person on the planet, like if he has those thoughts and just does it anyways, that sort of, I feel like gives you permission to let yourself be like, no, I don't want to do this right now, but who cares? Who cares if you want to do it? Yeah. I so, think people, people do will we'll get wrapped up in that, right? It's like, I don't want to do it. Therefore I'm not disciplined. Therefore I'm not. Yeah worthy therefore i'm not working hard enough and it's like there's a lot to be like to back to the your, your qu- question for me it's like there are plenty of days where i'm like i could probably go a week without like exercising if i had enough other shit going on and yeah. i would just ease just as easily let that fall by the wayside and there are plenty of times where i'm like i really don't want to do this but i'm 
just just like yeah going to i'm gonna i'm gonna as i'm walking myself to the cold tub i'm like, i don't want to do this i'm gonna oh, do this dude. i'm gonna tell myself like as i step one foot i don't want to do this my like, tub takes don't so long this. to fill yeah <laughs> and i literally the entire time it's filling, we got the like, you see we got this. the short i got the shorter hose out there Fills a lot faster. Had a little bit of an overflow the other week because I thought it took as long. I have time. literally never filled that tub without Hunter being like, hey, the tub got full. I uh, shut it off for you. <laughs> also, I got in it. <laughs> this, is a fucking, this, is a fucking, this is a fucking storm warning. Portland, Maine is flooding. It's like, what the fuck? It's sunny out. It's really nice out. That's weird. true. Getting ready to cold tub. I'm the same way with that tub. Like now, I don't fiddle fuck around. I don't like put a toe in. I just slide right in because the slower you get in that tub, the more painful it is. Just it's true. Dive That's right the in. thing. Just dive right in. Don't do it slowly. It sucks if you do it slow. I just haven't done. I, I have not. Right I knew in. that enough that I was just like, I'm just going to dunk right in. Immediate yeah. head submersion. Does I don't get the breathing as much as I think some people do. I'll start. I'll get cold pretty quick, but I don't. The breathing usually only takes me like 15 seconds to get my breathing under control and then I start whistling. When you I whistle the entire time. When you tub. start you though, whistle? Yeah. like if you haven't been doing it for a while, do you get that gasp like second number one or no? Uh, I still, it depends. Like, do you have to do the long, slow breathing for like five, 10 seconds or no? No, not really. Yeah. Like a couple, a couple. Deep, I think this is similar to breaths. your reaction in the Metcon. Yeah. Can we create a lot of our physiological Variation, responses, yeah. whether it's conscious or subconscious. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of sharp, deep breaths out. I just like, <sighs> like do a couple of those. And then yeah. next thing I know, the thing's over with. So like that, that getting in immediately and just getting a couple of big exhalations out when I first get in seems to make that like yeah. the part that was so terrible before. I, I, gen so much I really enjoy it. I just don't. And the one time and it was snowing and it was slushy, I was literally throwing snowballs out of the tub, like the, the water on top and my hand, I couldn't feel my fingers. And then I got like in the shower a little bit too soon and you get that burning like your fingers yeah. are just like literally on fire and i had to like isn't it funny that your hands, hands are out? safe in the frozen water and then you take them out and they are very unsafe very unsafe <laughs> yeah um but yeah just like my feet feet and hands kind of getting uncomfortably cold but other than that like everything else feels just, just rip feels that bandit right off yeah. anything else in the routine gentlemen could um, be nutrition could be sleep what my, could be I've exercise been, i've been uh really really on the get up 90 second bike like morning movement mm. type thing and then i read i try to read for like 20 or 30 minutes and i stretch while i read and i i saw this uh i saw k-star posted on a, on the ready state instagram where he was just like he's checking he's got it like his coffee table like kind of this height yeah and he's just like i'm gonna check my emails in the morning in different positions like i'm gonna mm. sit in the bottom of a squat check my email i'm gonna kick like a leg out and lunge like sit in a saddle pose like yep. these kind of passive stretches um just while i'm doing while i'm reading like thumbing through pages of a book and so it's sneaky like usually ends up being like 20 minutes of like yep. actual stretching, like a sneaky 20 minutes of loosening up basically my like hips and lower half. And that that's been a really like, that's really helped me like kind of wake up and just feel like I'm loose enough for the day. Yeah. My wife's been doing a lot of that really big kick for minimalism. So like, she's been like throwing shit out of our house and like That's trying the to the best. I, I love, love throwing all... shit away so much. I'm so <laughs> I will spend it. $800 on a dumpster and just, just so you could throw just so I can fill it. <laughs> And I'm talking like one of those crazy construction ones. My house is still filled with shit once I get rid of all yeah, of it. Of course. I just stand out there. I peek over the top. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. Get out of my house. But like part of this sorry, routine. No, sorry. Part of this routine, <laughs> in addition to throwing stuff out, she's been like, you know what? I'm going to actually get up and have a morning routine finally. Because like for the longest time, I was like, your mornings are so hectic. You like are up and out the door in like 15 minutes. That makes me want to die watching you try to turn your life around that fast every single morning. And for whatever reason... She came out of the fog and she's like, you know what? I'm gonna start getting up early. So she started getting up at 6.15 at like the latest. And we have one of those sunrise alarm clocks. So at like yeah. 5.55, 6 o'clock, it starts to light up the room. Um, and this is afforded her the opportunity to like get up and do some yoga, which, you know, she doesn't want me in the room for. So she says, get out. So yeah. I take care of the dogs and I've been going out to the living room and just meditating, which has been something that I really try to make a part of my life for a, a quite a strong stretch a while back. We actually, I actually looked with her the other day. I've had like, 1100 mindful minutes in the last year so like spent a good amount of time sitting and meditating and i had gotten a little bit away from it with like the hecticness of just yeah. life so getting back into that in the last like few weeks has been really nice and i just find that like it allows me even though you're supposed to kind of sit there with, with no real thoughts going through your head just kind of like noticing things and then moving on to the next thing like 
I found that, that that 10 minute period most mornings allows me to both like get away from things, but also let things kind of s- stew around in my brain and like think about what actually is important for the day. And I find that I'm more organized when I have that period in the morning where like there's both nothingness that occurs in meditation and also this you know, like weird, like, I think it's just my body doing its normal thing, kind of thinking about what's going to come up for the day. I mean, like, all right, make sure you do X, Y, and Z. And that I found that period helps me stay a little bit more on track and really focus on what what's actually important versus just like what's you know flying around the universe. Yeah, the I don't think I think you got to give yourself a little bit more credit. There's no supposed to with that stuff with the mindfulness. Mm. Um I feel like everybody right now basically puts their brain in a fry later basket and drops it in most days with this the stimulus that we get from TV and you know the cell phone and big screen to little screen to medium sized screen rotation and the research on that, like how to sort of reset those circuits is do nothing for 30 minutes, nothing at all. Yeah. No book, no podcast, no whatever, like literally just do nothing for 30 minutes. And it allows your brain to like get back to some level of equilibrium. So if you're taking that many minutes to just not do anything, like it's having a lot of the benefits that you think you might not be having when you're like, well, I just can't meditate because I think. It's like, that's not what. <laughs> I mean, for a long time, I had to come to the studio when no one was here first thing in the morning. The lights are all off and I would sit in one of these chairs. Yeah, you scared and like, the shit out of me. Yeah, I scared Drew because <laughs> I, fucking... I think the fucking building's empty and he comes out of a dark room. <laughs> but I'd literally sit here and early on that really helped. Like they, you know, the, the black, the uh, backlighting here on the display over here would be the only light in the room. Like I liked the fact that it wasn't overstimulating. And then I just found out the fact like I can literally meditate wherever I want, yeah. which is a huge part of like that. And you, the guided meditation I used to the waking up app does eventually talk about that. in one of the things like, Hey, things happen just like they happen who cares and that took me a while to kind of absorb and get through but now it's just like i can literally meditate wherever i want and it's funny that a lot of times i get here first thing in the morning and i'll put my coffee cup down in the car turn the car off and i'll just close my eyes and sit there for like a minute or two and then go into the office because i found that like a couple of minutes like sets me up to be receptive to and driving i think probably leads you into that you're not as like obsessed over whatever because you've had to sort of zone out a little bit yeah yeah i've been i I think the cold tub has been that meditation is still something that i haven't tried like formally yeah but the cold tub i think provides that because it's like a kind of just sit just sit there and like i'm thinking about how cold i am and i'm just whistling but i'm just doing those two things yeah um and it is like definitely kind of like leveling it's such a massive departure from evolutionary biology to be stimulated every second so like right, yeah. when you are in the cold tub and it's like three minutes doing nothing is a really long time it's like uh-oh <laughs> yeah that was Something a, a big part of that early this. on is like <laughs> i do the i like hey siri set a timer for and then i would yeah. do, do my thing and I couldn't believe how long two minutes felt the first few times I did it. And then yeah. now it's like two and a half, three minutes, which is still kind of like my daily drop in the tub kind of thing. When I go in, it's just like nothing now, but early on, I mean, the same thing happened in the sauna. Like I make it like eight minutes in the sauna. I'm like, I need 16 bottles of water. I need 18 towels. <laughs> I need to go jump in, a, you know, in the snow for a second, come back in. But like now, you know, yeah. 20 minutes is no big deal. Yeah. What do you got? Um, I don't know if I've talked, I do the, the, um, I need my routine to stay the same through the seasons. So the idea of being in Maine and the sun coming up behind trees, even if it is summer, like Mm. I get up fairly early. So I do the happy light for about 15 minutes in the morning. What's that? Um, you know, the, like for, for seasonal depression, people have the lights that mimic the sun. Oh, it's a literal light. It's a literal light thing that we've had back here. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got one in my office and if it's like super overcast, I will turn it on for lunch because you are supposed to see the sun as, at its like sort of varying levels um, throughout the day. But I do 15 minutes of that because no matter what time, you know, if it's 6 a.m. or whatever, or if it's overcast, it's right there on my counter. I sit down and I look at this thing for 15 minutes. That's made a big difference with my sleep. And then Working out in the morning has been the biggest difference. And the only reason I finally got into it was to beat the heat when we were doing all the marathon prep. Mm, yeah. Like I, I had to, and all, and just the sheer amount of time it takes to, to run that many miles. Like I don't want it eating into my day. So getting the light and getting the exercise done, I would say the only thing is I'm motivated to get up earlier because if I get up earlier, I can have a 90 minute gap before my exercise and I can have caffeine. 
Mm. If I actually wait until closer to like 7 a.m., that starts to fuck with my day a little bit too much and I don't like it. So um, I would say those things I learned in the summer through literally getting baked in the sun while, you know, jogging around back bay most days translated into like how I like naturally wanted to find a way to reverse engineer that because all summer long, like 8 PM hit and I could barely watch TV. I was cooked. Like, I don't think that gets talked about enough with sleep. Like tire yourself the fuck out. Like like you want to be tired and you're not, but you're not, you know, doing the, whatever it is, 10,000 steps or the like exercise or all those things. And like, I think I finally found what tired feels like. And it's like, I couldn't even imagine not sleeping. Yeah. The, we talk, I talk to members a lot about that. And there's the, the obvious one where it's just like, if, if this is the only movement that you do, like over the course of your day, the 60 minute CrossFit class, which you're not, you're not moving for the entire 60 minutes, right? If that's the only time that you do and the, you're, the rest of the time you're just sitting, sitting in your car, sitting at a desk, sitting on the couch, it's like you're not really setting yourself up for, for something restful. Like you need to be like, tire, yeah, tire yourself out, whether it's physical stimulation, mental stimulation, yeah. but not completely mindless sedentarism that, that is just going to, that, that is going to result in For me, in if it's only sleep. mental, I do the like, go over the million things in my brain when I lay down. When I add the physical part, there's too much actual exhaustion for me to go there. And I know that that's going to be a person to person. That fucks with me, the the mental, because as soon as I like, if I wake up, like one other thing that I've had to do recently is like, I'm trying to get, well, one, I'm trying to like drink enough water. But if I do it too late in the day, then I always wake up to piss at like somewhere between like two and 5 a.m. And the closer to everybody knows the feeling of like looking at the clock and being like, please give me like four more hours of sleep. And it's like, it's like five twenty six, and you're like, God fucking damn it. I'm not gonna be able to go back to sleep. Wilbur tried to go under the covers at 5 a.m. this morning. I had that thought. Good. <laughs> the problem is, is if I have, if I wake up at that time and then all of a sudden start, like I start thinking about that sort of stuff, like what I have going on, I'm fucked. You like a mouth breather? Day. No. You breathe through your nose when you sleep? Uh, Yeah, I think so. For the most part. Make sure you do. That's normally the reason why Mm. people end up drinking too much water. Obviously for us, it's odd to go into winter and start to get dried out a little bit. That's something we don't really deal with here in Maine, especially living close to the ocean. We don't have to deal with it as much, but like I have a deviated symptom, so I have to wear the nose strips, but like massive difference. Like I used to get up to piss Mm. every night and now like once a quarter, maybe Mm. something like that. Cause you just expel so much moisture when you breathe out of your mouth. You don't do the same thing when you breathe out of your nose. I know that. Uh, I'll start on the nutrition front. I <laughs> struggle with, so this is, I don't know, this is a confession, a question. We should have a nutrition expert on sometime, interview them. But when I do exercise more, I am in more of a calorie surplus because of how hungry that makes me. Okay. So like the idea of either... I want to shed a few pounds or I do want to maintain one of the ways that I know how to do that is by exercising, but it makes me hungry as hell. I can eat an insane amount of food when I'm exercising seven days a week. Do you eat breakfast? Do you still eat? We talked about this a little bit. Yeah, I do. Um, But the, the research shows that it should be much higher in protein than what I'm doing for breakfast. Like front loading protein just makes more sense from your circadian rhythm standpoint in terms of how your body reacts to it. Um, and I don't do a great job of that. So I do want to try doing a higher protein breakfast because right now the only reason I would have breakfast is if I'm doing fed training and I do like oatmeal, honey, collagen, like basically hit. I don't, I don't like the way that I feel if the food's not like quicker digesting. Yep. Like I, per, I perform better training fasted than I do fed, which is weird. Like my wattage is usually down about 10 watts on each machine if I'm, if I ate something. Since I stopped fasting and like fasting, I mean like dinner, not eating and then not eating until like one or 2 PM. Yeah. I feel way better personally. I think that's a, I think that's a, like a genetic thing. Cause there, we, I was talking to one of our members, James Higgins about it. Yeah. And you can get tested to determine whether or not like your body, like you're better off on like a lower fat versus higher carb or something sure. like that yeah, yeah. sort of diet or higher fat 
sort of thing. And I've noticed that like that's been that's been really helpful to me is eating like eating breakfast just makes me less irritable throughout the day as well. Um, a lot of I, people overeat when they fast too, which is funny. Like a lot of people overeat when they fast. Yeah. And you also lose a ton of muscle mass because you go from 9 p.m. to 1 p.m. with no muscle protein no input. synthesis. Yeah. At no all. input. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt your diet. Your diet. No, you answered tribe. my question. More, no. uh, well, well, yeah, so sort of. Other, so I do sort of eat breakfast. I, yeah. I eat breakfast I probably like four days a week, I mm-hmm. would say, somewhere in that range. Um, but yeah, I, I need. I need to try that. I need to like take the advice that I would give somebody else and try to up the protein in the morning and see if that helps. Yeah. The, for me, I actually recently just adjusted my numbers down. I think it was partially because I wasn't exercising quite as much since I hurt myself, but I like had a couple of days on the old scale. I almost sent you guys a picture. I should have, but I was like, like 189 and rocks I'm in like, his pockets. I'm like, yo, I was, <laughs> fuck is I was that? 202 when I got back from vacation. I was 195 this morning. Damn. Wow. My body has that kind of too much information. Well, huh? <laughs> My body does not like to use the toilet on, when I'm traveling, even for a week and a half. It's like, nah, we're good. We'll wait. It's yeah. I call that camp mode. What's that? I call that camp mode. You yeah. go camp mode. You don't shit when you're <laughs> camp not at home. Mode. Yeah. I think it's a lot easier to not I, shit. I've had, yeah. Like a two week vacation. It's like, you know, here and there and then get home and it's like, Stop. Weight loss is easy. <laughs> Dude, the first time I noticed that was in, in China, which was like my junior year of college. You got a shit in holes in China. There aren't a lot of like sit on a toilet kind of vibes there. So you like go to a place, restaurant, you, you take a quick look at the bathroom. You're like, that's a hole. Not here. <laughs> Not here. And then next thing you know, you're like, oh, you find the, the porcelain chair. You're like, all right, now this can happen. But the same thing happened. I'm traveling. I said this to you when we were in Hawaii a couple yeah. of years ago. It's like so weird that my digestion seems to be better better in air quotes on the road than it is at home. And I don't know what it is about that. Cause it's not like, not like I eat like a, you know, a monk in a monastery when it comes to vacation, you are, it's a stress response. Yeah. It's you're finally like, you don't give yourself breaks. Like you feel guilty when you give yourself any break whatsoever, yes. whether it's work or exercise. So you finally give yourself a break and your body's like, yo, this is, this is nice, how it's right? supposed this to be. Nice, you man, chill the it. fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Accurate. Uh, food. Um, similar boat to you. I probably need more protein in the front end, but like one of the biggest things that I've changed with this season, as opposed to just any other season in the past is like, I also experimented with intermittent fasting and probably took it a little too far past, like what would be yeah. appropriate for someone trying to be a competitive athlete with a lot, too many days of like 16 and eight, 16 hours of fasting and then eight hours of eating and then getting into the situation at night where like, a dumpster. I'll just eat anything that's in our house. Like, oh, is that a bag of flour and some sugar? I mean, mix it together <laughs> in a bowl and I'll eat it. Like, you should not eat that. Two dry ingredients. <laughs> yeah, just sitting at the, the counter, squirting honey just in my face. <laughs> so, try to do more of like the protein based oatmeal and stuff like that. And I've found that training fed in the morning is I'm just as sharp as when I wasn't doing that because I was worried about the same thing. Like, if I yeah. am used to fasted training and now I f- eat, eat, am I going to feel shitty or am I going to feel good? Honestly, I feel very similar. Like I don't feel yeah. a big change there. Um, but, but I would big, have to guess your, your, um, metabolic rates probably in the neighborhood of 500 to a thousand calories more per day than mine is. So like, like probably. you being in a, you with that metabolic machinery being in a fasted <clears throat> state, I think is more detrimental to you than it is to a, a plebe like and, me. And a, and a big thing there is like, I realized that like a lot of the stuff that was supposed to like, you know, get me strong or potentially like create some hypertrophy, like that wasn't happening. I was just kind of the, always the same body weight. I wasn't seeing any really change in my body and I, now adding, you know, eating breakfast and then making sure that I'm getting, hitting my numbers for carbs and protein fat. I really pay, don't pay too much attention to, but carbs and protein, I pay very much attention to, um, that all of a sudden, like, I'm carrying more body weight around than I'm used to. I'm like 212, 213. And like historically when I was trying to be competitive, it was close to like 205 and being like, is that a little too heavy? Cause like if you're too right. heavy, you're not good at half the sport because half the sport is body weight stuff. So, you know, I've noticed that while having an increase in body weight and eating more often that those things haven't fallen off. And I think it's just basically like I'm actually fueling my body the way it needs to be fueled yeah. to perform at a higher level for so long. I, I wouldn't say it's full on like eating disorder style, but like there is some element of like, you didn't work out. You didn't, you know, burn the gas. Don't put gas in the car. Sure. But like, yeah. like you just described, like you use a lot of your gas, just existing, just like 
thinking and being on a podcast and sitting there and healing from exercise the day before. Yeah. And I didn't like give that enough credence. So it's like, all right, I didn't do 400 thrusters today. I probably shouldn't have that extra slice of toast. Like, it's like, no, you probably should eat that slice of toast. And you but the routine things. and the habitual element of it is if I eat 3000 calories every day and my output over the course of seven days is X, it's a lot easier to manage doing the same thing every single day than it is guessing how many, how much of a deficit you're in on a training day and how much of a surplus you're in on a rest day. Yeah. Like and I found, staying even yeah. across those again, you know, there are studies that show that people that try to go to the gym three days a week go, um, they, they just stop going compared to someone who's asked to go every single day. So it's just like, I go every day, I go to the gym. That's yeah. what I do. Go to the gym three days a week. Mm. I'll go tomorrow. There's going to be a stretch of two <laughs> days in there somewhere where yeah. you're like, Nah, fuck yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that's the the biggest change is I've tried to be way more consistent with eating more frequently. Like I think that's a big problem. Just the fasting thing was convenient for so long. Like, yeah. hey, you don't have to think about it for yeah. 16 hours a day. That's pretty freaking great. I can do everything else I need to do. But if this thing is important to me, which it is right now, like I want to make sure that I'm actually on working on both sides of the thing. You can't just bury yourself and that fill that hole back in every single day. And that fueling is filling that hole back in so you can dig it again the following day. And I think that's a huge issue in our sport. Generally speaking, you see anybody who has anything to do with nutrition in our sport. It's always like, you're not eating enough. You're not eating enough. You're not eating enough. And it's because people are worried about putting on excess weight and carrying on to what doesn't look good. But like, you probably heard this before, the best performers in the sport, not all of them are shredded. We always make the joke about someone that goes to the cross the games every year needing a sandwich or two kind of throughout the weekend because being hyper, you know, being super lean like that isn't going to allow you yeah. to perform your best. So like figuring out what that is for helps me in the open. Huge, it helps less the further you go into the season. Yeah. The more like, you're asked to do in any like sore, like specific stretch of time. Exactly. Then the more you need to have that on you so you can actually have the fuel you need. High volume perform. being super lean is rough. Yeah. It's very rough. So I, I, I think the fueling thing is a huge part of the difference, historically speaking, to now. Like allowing myself to eat more regularly, eat, eat and seeing how that's actually equating to performance and not excess body weight, which is a, one of the concerns I had is like, you know, not that the aesthetics are a huge goal of mine here, but it's n nice to not, you know, feel fluffy when you're doing things and trying to, you know, do a perfor uh, any sort of workout. I mean, like, man, if I hadn't hung on to that extra five pounds from pounding Skittles the night before, maybe I could have done that on broken. That'd be so dope. Gain five pounds via Skittles. How many skills you need for five pounds, you think? Five pounds of yeah. Skittles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. At least, at least five pounds of Skittles. That was one of the super weird things about marathon training that the half marathon I lost, I think I, was a little, I either lost nine or 11 pounds either one pound plus or minus from 10 and I got back up to weight with water so quickly. I'm so, fast. so thankful yeah. that marathon was not a hot day. I could not, I could not imagine running a marathon and like how hot was it when we ran our half? It was toasty. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was, Cause they were doing that construction and when it's hot out in that dust, that dust. my that, shoes were different color by the end. I told myself his, every single lap that if I could make it through more. the dust, then I was home free every lap. Cause you come around the bay side, you get the breeze. Yeah, Some nice. of the trees come over you. You get a dude. There's no breeze it's on the construction baking. side, and there's literally dirt being thrown in your face, and it's so much hotter. And it's like this stretch is only like it's not even a mile. Like just run through this, and you're home free. Because every lap, I just couldn't believe the, the next lap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my shoes started the color of Drew's hat, and they ended <laughs> the color of this wall, just for the amount of like sweat and dust, and like I couldn't remember like. Like just wringing my socks out there. I'm like, how much water weight? I didn't actually weigh myself, but I'm sure it was probably in the same neighborhood, about 10 pounds. It was fun for me to make fun of you because I gave you a lot of advice that you were like, yeah, sounds good, bro. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and you were dead after. And I was like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> that was good. That was fucking good. No worries. Dead. That was terrible. Um, we're going we're gonna to finish um, with my Wadapalooza rant. Rant, rant, rant. <sighs> Hear it. I, well, I want to ask you guys, when you leave Wadapalooza mm -hmm. and someone asks you how was Wadapalooza, how do you answer that question? Hectic. It was fine. I usually say it's hectic because it's usually that's, you know, we have so many things going on when we're there. Long, that yeah, it was, it was good. Long, long day. Kind of weird because you've got like downtime, but it's also not downtime. It's yeah. like active. It's, running it's whole just, season. it's <laughs> clearly the best event of the year and it is so fucking frustrating every single year. Yeah. From Something every standpoint. Yeah. From every single standpoint. You can go there as an athlete. You can go there as a spectator. You can go there as a vendor. You can go there as a coach. You can go there, you know, as a media person in every single category that you slot into. 
it's like this is awesome and this fucking sucks yeah it's crazy like i don't i don't know how i because people ask me and i don't know how to answer the question the 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 no rep dude on mm. youtube is the yeah, hiller is doing like a series about it and it's like yeah it is like it's a net positive and it's a good thing and it's great but like jesus could be better yeah fucking nightmare I think so. So one of the issues this year is the fire marshal was really strict about how many people could be in the stands. Like he had someone on the VIP mezzanine. They, counting them all. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. Counting people to come out, three go in, that whole thing. If you were standing on the railing, they sent you, you know, away, that kind of deal. And the people that paid for the VIP couldn't watch at all. They literally, when it was an elite heat, they, they just stood on the ground and we're talking like Medeiros and his crew walks up and they're like, no. And it's funny to watch too. Cause you see the people that are like, fuck Spacing this person too, needs yeah. to be let in. Yeah. And the security's like, I, I don't know. Who I literally cannot let you in. <laughs> like there's, there's nothing I can do about it. And like the, the coaching thing this year, there's, there's nowhere to go. I was going to ask. So it wasn't the same thing that's uh... been in the past, like that upper hill. No, it area, is, or... but you can't watch the events. You can't watch any of the events. I remember that year we went and watched that because they did multiple stages. And yeah. like, oh, it's a new stage. And like you and I were standing on stumps, like putting our hands on people's shoulders to try to see anything when Austin was like, I don't know, snatching yeah. handstand. And I don't need anything cramp. special. I just literally I cannot watch it. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing is, is they had this like, Goa did like a recovery tent. It was this huge dome and they uh, projected onto the roof, like the roof of it. So you lay down and you, you know, get like a fucking... That's pretty cool. 120p like IMAX. <laughs> I know that those things don't go together, but you can envision what that's like. Tell um, us that like. <laughs> but it's like it's you basically go pixel. in there and watch and do that. So, I, yeah, I don't know. It's awesome and it's really annoying. It's one of those things where, like, the me, like, 95% of the time is like, why is this so fucked up? every fucking year and then like when they call heat 912 of the like like teenage like one-year-old to nine-year-old division yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like how well, many people are you trying to organize well, in this that, tiny well, area the thing right it's like it's like why the fuck how the fuck did we have how did the swim route get fucked up like why do we have some people swimming like to the right some people swimming around the buoy Ooh, like i got by fired K up with the like, swimming last year the swim, well it was absurd it was like how did this get so far fucked up and then like the much smaller amount of the time, but the much bigger picture me is like, it's a fucking miracle that this exists and, and operates with any sort of competency. Like the fact that all of these athletes and like all of these volunteers were organized well enough to have like made it through this entire weekend with nobody like dying. It's like a fucking miracle. It's a, it's a miracle of like logistics and commit and like it people, is like, and there's just it. enough goodwill sprinkled around to create that balance. Yeah. Cause like if I need to be a little bit annoyed, so a CrossFit athlete can get a check for $70,000. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's something that I've been like all in on from the beginning. Like we're, we're paying athletes and not ourselves kind of a situation. So yeah. I, that's okay. But it's just like, are they taking on too much? Like, yeah. I don't have an answer yeah. and I'm going to get cold as hell next December. And I'm going to be like, Palooza is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to be, be happy back. and angry simultaneously the whole weekend yeah. once again. It'll be irate until you get and you'll be fine. <laughs> and you'll be like, yeah, this place it's rules. Peruvian chicken will be right around the corner. It'll be all right. So they yeah. got, we'll, we'll, we'll finish on, we'll finish on. They got their, the whole, that crew of athletes and parents and, you know, entourage got there. Maya was coming in from the airport, so I had to wait. And they ate all of the tacos that I wanted. So they go, like they uh, we actually like just had meat. like a huge table and they took the rest of that. And I was like, that's my huge table. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like went back there and joked about it. And of course, all of them tried to give me their food. And I was like, just, just let me be annoyed. Okay. Just, just be no way just I'm taking your food. With all those radishes all over it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. Fucking Spice peasants. potatoes. <laughs> fucked up that meat by putting radishes on it. <laughs> Ugh, gross. <laughs> Radish. <laughs> I like radish. Final thoughts on oh, an episode <laughs> where we went full Pepe Sylvia. God. Mm. Are the Totopos still good? Yeah. I, I will say that they've lost their touch a tiny bit. Really? A little bit. No, not the Totopos, the restaurant. Oh. But yeah. They're good. Nice. They're good. How many times you go? Just once or? No, I went twice. All right. Yeah. 
I just saw Maya's story post and I made it sound like you guys went for dinner like every night and I wasn't sure if that was the case. She would have gone three or four times. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. And I was like, I'm good with going a bunch. Can we just, she wanted to go for lunch the night after we went for dinner. Normally I'm the one that says dumb shit like that. Yeah. (laughs) Final thoughts. Uh, I mean, the big take home away from this podcast is just lifestyle stuff and like how many different variables have you thought about? And hopefully if you're not doing something we talked about, like you can take that experience from us and try to adopt it and just know that like, you don't need to go all in on every single thing all at once. Like pick one of those things that you think maybe is missing from the way you train or the way you live your lifestyle, the way you kind of augment your, your training lifestyle and just try to, you know, put it into practice and start small. Like you don't need to go crazy with it. You know, kind of going back to the meditation thing early on, like meditating is just sitting quietly. Like it's not, We'll make it up to be more than it actually space. is. Yeah. So treat it that way. And if, again, if you can find something in this podcast you can do, that's, you know, low hanging fruit, do that first. And once you've accomplished that, go on to the next thing. Um, sure. Along, along those lines, I think my, like kind of reflecting on the things that I literally just said, it's, a. Uh, at some point, if you're, a, if you're a competitive CrossFitter, aspiring cr- competitive CrossFitter listening to this, that will that will end at some point, right? You will no longer be a competitive CrossFitter, either voluntarily or otherwise. And like the found, remember, like kind of the foundational reason that we're here is is a is like kind of the health and longevity type thing. We're combating what we currently have as of the Lucky Charms instead of a steak recommendation. <laughs> that's about that's the oh, fuck. Why don't we talk about that? I, I can't get believe all fired we actually up. missed that. But like that that is the Next time. That, that is a that is that post or wherever that comes from to me is like kind of an encapsulation of where we are almost as like a society not even on like the nutrition and health like idea it's like literally everything is backwards and it's like and you're being and people are being fed that literally and figuratively um but you can there are a lot of different ways that you can measure and gauge progress or do or like learn about different things that you like that also happen to be beneficial we've gone through how many podcasts where we're citing like you know 11 minutes per week of the cold tub has a 60 reduces your all-cause mortality by 60 or whatever it is and it's just like there's a we could come up with a laundry list of those statistics and the odds that you're going to do every single one of those with the consistency that's required to like get that specific benefit is probably pretty low but you can tack you can stack a lot of those different like little one-off things of just like Oh man, that cold tub. I actually really enjoy that. So maybe I'm going to mix that in my routine for a little while or yeah. wow, it turns out the lower carb, higher fat diet for me was good or like the keto works for me or actually that doesn't work at all for me. Like I feel like a I feel like a slug and my physical and cognitive performance is, has dropped off. But there are a lot of different little things that you can do and you if you add those up, don't think about it from like a I'm going to do this for 30 days sort of thing. Just I, I'm more of a type who's going to be like, I'm going to sprinkle this in and I'm going to do it for as long as I feel like I'm enjoying it and it's creating benefit, knowing that eventually like something else is probably going to come along and like, I'm going to mess around with that for a while. And you slowly accumulate all of these little things that you know, work or don't work for you and can create positive adaptation or, or, you know, best practices, improve, best practice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Basically those best practices. So be willing to maybe be willing to experiment a little bit with that. There's a lot of information that we provide and um, the opposite of, you know, the enemy of perfect is, is what is it? Good. Enemy of good is perfect. Yes. Enemy, yeah. enemy yeah. of progress is perfect, perfect is the per- enemy. Yeah. yeah. Perfect <laughs> is the enemy of progress. There we yeah. go. So um, yeah, pick, pick a couple things and, and think about be willing to have a, a longer time horizon than right now. Am I going to get my snatch? up five pounds in the next six weeks. When you get older, you don't get tricked as often. And that makes me wonder what's next. Mm. Like when do I got to start sleeping upside down? Yeah. Um, do I got to like take you my whole fingernail that? off? Like yeah. what is the next no. thing? <laughs> like completely stop doing what, or you have to be doing this. I really wonder. I swallow a full ice cube every single day. <laughs> yeah. It was a joke about eat, I eat one pine cone every day. Yeah. I just live to be a hundred. I eat one pine cone every morning <laughs> with skim milk. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a curveball right here. Are you ready? You guys know how I feel, and many people know how I feel about organized religion. So okay. We're going to do some religion Ooh, talk here. I like where this is going. But the Serenity Prayer is like a goat quote. You guys know what the Serenity Prayer is? 
Why don't God you remind God me? God I don't me know. The serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the will to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Is that it? Very close. Yes. Okay. This is a touch of paraphrasing, but essentially, you like that, a lot of what and we, also with you? a lot of what we talked about today, <laughs> like that right there. Like if you had one lesson to give people, and obviously it expands out into a million lessons. Yeah. But like that to me is what sits underneath all of the stuff that we talked about today. And there aren't that many things that you can't control in some aspect, which is sort of just that extra part of like the willingness to do the thing that is going to move you forward. Mm. Um, and we talked about it a little bit on the last podcast and I've been digging back into it again. The book mindset is just can be the type of thing for someone who is a bit needs a bit more of a nudge and doesn't like the, you know, reading philosophy or something like that. It's definitely a, a, a really good thing to go in and look at and creating that matrix in your life of where you're fixed and where you're willing to grow. Um, it can just, again, be a little bit more of like a roadmap to executing on the serenity prayer. Did we do it? Did yeah. it. You're going to say uh, in our father before we before we close out. Thank you for tuning in to another episode <laughs> of the Misfit Podcast. That was a Goon Squad freestyle episode. If you want us to shut up and move back to a specific topic, let us know. And if you liked it, also let us know. You can head to discord.gg forward slash Misfit Athletics. Join the community. Let us know what you thought about this episode. Thank you to our show sponsors, properfuel.co. Use the code word misfit. Sharpentheaxco.com. Use your favorite athlete code. You save money and you give money to them for their upcoming competitive season. And we are obviously brought to you by Misfit Athletics and Team Misfit. You can head to misfitathletics.com or the team misfit.com. I was going to say marketplace, but that's not what it's called. <laughs> you can get a free trial of both. We'll see you next week. Oh,